Oh, well, I won two tickets to the Canada's Cup. Yeah, I thought I might invite my new friend Chuck. Told him he could really use to chill the fuck out. Chill the fuck out! Get to the bong with the force of a horse. And then he lit mine with a mighty torch. And now we're two best friends going down the porch. Well, I know that this life can get you down, down, down. So hard to get your feet on the ground, oh Lord. Well, I'll try. Yes, I'll try to just get by, by, by. But I just can't take it anymore. No, I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> yes, I added a couple of verses to this life because it's such a great song. And in this episode, I want to tell you a story about my UFO sighting. And I'm going to tell you this story because there seems to be a link between the phenomenon and who sees it. And this is sort of being told in the story of war that Tom DeLonge and Peter Lavenda are uh, in the midst of, well, I'm in the midst of reading their book right now. But that's one of the points they're making is very seriously the idea that those who were initially involved in the Roswell crash in 1947 had not only a synchronous pattern leading them up to it, but after it. And I've talked about how synchronous my life is. And this UFO sighting is really kind of different than I've heard anyone else talk about. And I wasn't the only one who saw it, so it's not that it's uncorroborated. But at the time that it happened, it was probably fall of 2016. I'm almost certain of the timing. I think I, I want to say it was probably mid or early October. It was cold out. And it was about 9.30, 9.40 at night, and I was living east of Hudson, Wisconsin, along Interstate 94 in a townhome. And my side of the townhome faced directly east, uh, you know, directly east. And so at about 9.30, 9.40, my dog wanted to go out, which is just normal what happens. And so I go to the door, and as I look out the glass of the door, and I'm, as I'm opening it, I see up in the clouds, there's, there's, this, there's this light in the trees that's moving across the trees. Now, at this point, I'd been there for about a year, and I knew just from experience, even from flying, that the planes came in for the airport at Minneapolis-St. Paul often when they use the route straight along I-94. So me looking out the window, it's common to see a plane coming in this direction, a white light anyway, um, even if you couldn't hear it. But this one was going in this direction. This light was, you know, was going across, which really caught my eye. And uh, so I let the dog out and I walked down the walk to see if, because this thing was moving through the trees. So I walked down the walk and I got around the end. And as I, as I, as I get around the end, there's a giant obelisk floating in the sky, slowly, quietly floating across the sky. And there's a second one at the end of my driveway fl flying directly over the center of the neighborhood. And just as I'm seeing these two things coming across, my daughters come home. And so they had been in marching band at the time, and marching band practice had gotten over, and they were just arriving home, and they got out and literally said, Papa, is this that UFO thing? And I'm like, yes, this is that UFO thing. So it wasn't just an obelisk like you might see a stone obelisk, but rather it was the shape of an obelisk against a very dark sky. Come here. Against a very dark sky. And that dark sky, come on. Time out. Time in. And that dark sky, in front of it was this giant obelisk. At the very top, there's two lights. I'm trying to remember if there was a red one on top or the red one was on bottom. I believe the red one was on bottom. And yes, <sighs> time out, time in. There was a red, uh, there was a red one and a white one. I, I, Maybe the white was on bottom. That's what I saw first. And that white light above it had a V. You could see the silhouetted outsides, and then you could see the line connecting it where that triangle ended. And then you could see these very light silhouetted lines that went up the top and made up the top of, well, as I said, at the top of one of these objects just floating there. And as best I could tell, there were other similar lights like them in other places. And so, you know, my daughter stayed out for a couple of minutes and then they went in and I stayed out for about 20 because at that point they'd kind of gone off into the distance. They'd become a light that I could still see, but I couldn't really tell what it was. 
And so after about 20 minutes, and I was quite cold and I wasn't wearing shoes, I decided to head in. So I, I reported it dutifully to you. I reported it to MUFON. And I don't recall how long or how much later the call came in, but I got a call and they left a message and it was a woman. And I believe she said she was from Minnesota MUFON. And she left the most odd message. She said, Mr. Burke, uh, we got your report and what you've reported is what we generally call a UFO disc. I'm like, I reported a freaking obelisk. I did not report a, a disc. I have no idea what you're talking about. Clearly you don't mean to get a hold of me. And so I just didn't respond to the email or to the, to the voicemail. Well, a couple of weeks later, uh, might've been a few months even, I don't recall for sure. I got a call from an elderly gentleman. Got me what his name was, but he took the full report of what happened. And uh, I did upload a video and some pictures to it, but you really can't see much because again, it was just these very light silhouetted lines against a very dark sky that it itself looked almost translucent against. Yeah. And so that was my UFO sighting. And uh, I, I don't have any other really unique UFO sightings. I saw an orb one time fly over my house, uh, two of them, which was odd, but that was back in like 2012 or 2014. And so UFOs are really unique. And if you have a UFO sighting, leave me your thoughts about how yours went. And have you ever had a geometric shape? Have you ever had an obelisk or a triangle? Or did you just have one of those round circular worlds? They're telling us something. We just have to try and figure out what. Thank you and peace out, everybody. Hi, I'm glad you see you finally settled down. Mm-hmm.